Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Let us pray. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. From the womb of my mother the Lord hath called me by name, and hath made my mouth as it were a sharp sword. Beneath the shadow of his hand hath he hidden me, and hath made me like to a polished arrow. It is a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord, and to sing praises unto thy name, O Most Highest. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. From the womb of my mother the Lord hath called me by name, and hath made my mouth as it were a sharp sword. Beneath the shadow of his hand hath he hidden me, and made me like to a polished arrow. Hear what our Lord Jesus Christ saith, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Let us pray. Almighty God, by whose providence thy servant John Baptist was wonderfully born and sent to prepare the way of thy Son, our Savior, by preaching repentance, make us so to follow his doctrine and holy life that we may truly repent according to his preaching and after his example, constantly speak the truth, boldly, boldly rebuke vice, and patiently suffer for the truth's sake. Through the same thy Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with thee in the Holy Ghost ever, one God, world without end. Amen. The epistles written in the 40th chapter of the book of the prophet Isaiah, beginning at the first verse. Comfort ye, comfort ye my people, saith your God. Speak ye comfortably to Jerusalem, and cry unto her, that her warfare is accomplished, that her iniquity is pardoned. For she hath received of the Lord's hand double for all her sins. The voice of him that crieth in the wilderness, Prepare ye the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be exalted, and every mountain and hill shall be made low, and the crooked shall be made straight, and the rough places plain. And the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all flesh shall see it together, for the mouth of the Lord hath spoken it. The voice said, Cry. And he said, What shall I cry? All flesh is grass, and all the goodliness thereof is as the flower of the field. The grass withereth, the flower fadeth, because the Spirit of the Lord bloweth upon it. Surely the people is grass. The grass withereth, the flower fadeth, but the word of our God shall stand forever. O Sion, that bringest good tidings, get thee up into the high mountain. O Jerusalem, that bringest good tidings, lift up thy voice with strength. Lift it up, be not afraid. Say unto the cities of Judah, Behold your God. Behold, the Lord God will come with strong hand, and his arm shall rule for him. Behold, his reward is with him, and his work before him. He shall feed the flock like a shepherd, he shall gather the lambs in his arm, and carry them in his bosom, and shall gently lead those that are with young. Here endeth the epistle. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia, thou child shalt be called the prophet of the highest. Thou shalt go before the face of the Lord to prepare his ways. Alleluia. Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. The continuation of the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Glory, Glory be to thee, O Lord. Elizabeth's full time came that she should be delivered, and she brought forth a son. And her neighbors and her cousins heard how the Lord had showed great mercy upon her, and they rejoiced with her. 
And it came to pass that on the eighth day they came to circumcise the child. And they called him Zacharias after the name of his father. And his mother answered and said, Not so, but he shall be called John. And they said unto her, There is none of thy kindred of this called by this name. And they made signs to his father how he would have him called. And he asked for a writing table and wrote, saying, His name is John. And they marveled. And his mouth was opened immediately, and his tongue loosed, and he spake and praised God. And fear came on all that dwelt round about them. And all these sayings were noised abroad throughout all the hill country of Judea. And all they that heard them laid them up in their hearts, saying, What manner of child shall this be? And the hand of the Lord was with him. And his father Zacharias was filled with the Holy Ghost, and prophesied, saying, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he hath visited and redeemed his people, and hath raised up an horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David, as he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been since the world began, that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all that hate us, to perform the mercy promised to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant, the oath which he sware to our father Abraham, that he would grant unto us, that we, being delivered out of the hand of our enemies, might serve him without fear, in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life. And thou, child, shalt be called the prophet of the highest, for thou shalt go before the face of the Lord to prepare his ways, to give knowledge of salvation unto his people by the remission of their sins, through the tender mercy of our God, whereby the day spring from on high hath visited us, to give light to them that sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, to guide our feet into the way of peace. And the child grew, and waxed strong in spirit, and was in the deserts till the day of his showing unto Israel. Praise, Praise be, be to, to thee, O Christ. Christ. I believe in one God, the, the Father, Father Almighty, Almighty, maker of, of heaven, heaven and earth, and, earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and invisible and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Ghost to the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again, according to the Scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of the Father. And he shall come again with glory to judge both the quick and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord and giver of life, who proceedeth from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spake by the prophets. And I believe one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life for the world to come. Amen. Please be seated. Here we are today celebrating the feast day of St. John the Baptist. It's good to see everyone here. Kind of surprised all these folks here at 12 noon today. That's awesome. Um, one of the things that, that I've, I've noticed as, as we've been going through this whole COVID thing for months, it always seems that like the, the scripture lessons and, you know, for the particular holy days and, and the Sundays and everything, all are kind of like drilling in on everything that's going on around us in our society. And, uh, you know, I guess it shouldn't surprise me because the Word of God is supposed to handle all those things for us, but it's still, it's just like all of a sudden, bam. And today, the, the collect that we get for St. John the Baptist, li listen, listen to the end, you know, the, the, the part, our petition part of the collect of the day. It says, make us so to follow his doctrine and holy life that we may truly repent according to his preaching and after his example 
constantly to speak the truth, boldly rebuke vice, and patiently suffer for the truth's sake. Speak the truth, rebuke vice, suffer for truth's sake. That's what he did, obviously. And when you think about what's going on in our society right now, um, and not necessarily so much the, the, the COVID thing, but certainly the, uh, the, the pressure that has um, come upon our society after the death of George Floyd up in Minneapolis. And um, one of the things, you know, we talk about here, you know, this I, to constantly speak the truth. I think that's something that's sorely lacking in our society right now. Because one of the things, whenever we hear the phrase, speak the truth, what do we usually hear as a modifier for truth? We don't hear speak the truth. We hear speak my truth. That's pretty much putting some other God before me right there, isn't it? That I'm the one that decides what the truth is. And John the Baptist our Savior Jesus Christ made it clear, and all the apostles and teachers and, and faithful Christian men and women down through the ages have always said that there is truth. There is the truth. What is the truth? Jesus Christ. He is the truth. He is the Word of God. In Him is embodied all the truth that is God. That's the truth. There is no other truth. And, and that's the thing that is so important for us to remember. And, but notice what we're asking for, what we asked for this morning. It says not only constantly to speak the truth, in other words, speak about Jesus Christ, how He you know, was born, died, was buried, and rose again, and will come again. I mean, that's the essential truth, the essential teaching of Christianity. As the Roman Catholics say in their Eucharistic, their first Eucharistic prayer, they say, Christ has died, Christ has risen, Christ will come again. Real simple shorthand, but that is the truth. Everything else that we hear out there, whether it's on Facebook, whether it's on CNN, whether it's on Fox, that ain't that truth. That's something else completely. And when we talk about truth, there's nothing about our political persuasions that have anything to do with truth. The things that we may believe in our politics, whether Republican, Democrat, Libertarian, Communist, Green Party, whatever, that ain't truth. That's a political system. And we need to keep that in mind, especially when we are talking politics with somebody else. We have to keep that in mind. When we talk about the truth, it's Jesus Christ. We have to be able to do as John did and point, behold the Lamb of God. Behold him that taketh away the sins of the world. That's the truth. And what we have to do in the same process as John did is, since we know what the truth is, we have to boldly rebuke vice. When's the last time you boldly rebuked vice? Just putting it in your mind, it's a rhetorical question, you don't have to raise your hand, okay? Um, most of us will probably point, well, the last time I rebuked vice was with my child when your kid did something wrong. But I think it's another thing completely. Boldly rebuking vice is actually to share the truth, to share Jesus Christ. That's really essentially what it is. Because if we can point people to Christ, whatever vice there may be, if that person repents, that vice is gone. Therein is truth. I'm using that word a lot today, but that's okay because that's what this is about. This is what John was about. And, but we always have to remember, you know, especially in, in our society where we are with everything going on around us, that we have to remember that when we do speak the truth, when we boldly rebuke vice, we're going to suffer for speaking the truth. Now, chances are nobody's gonna take a sword and lop off your head like what happened to John. <laughs> but all sorts of different things. You can be attacked. You can be, you know, ostracized and so on and so forth. We know we see that kind of stuff happen all the time. But we have to be ready for it. We have to be prepared for it. You know, chances are in our lifetimes we may very well not 
be beheaded like John was. But there's always the chance, and history has proven out over and over again, that when Christians speak the truth, speak about Jesus Christ, they will suffer for that truth's sake. Jesus made it clear. He says, you're going to suffer persecution. It's the reality of it. But we know that when we stick by Him, we stick by the truth, we have a promise. And that promise is that we will be with Him in life everlasting. We're secure in that knowledge. It's really about all I can say about it. But we have to be prepared. We have to be not shy. We have to be those Christians that are not lukewarm that He says He's going to spew us out. We have to stand for the truth. We have to stand for Him, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father, which is in heaven. Let us pray. Dearly beloved, we offer the Eucharist this day in union with Jesus Christ, our great High Priest. We also offer great thanksgiving for the life, witness, and martyrdom of St. John Baptist. Please pray this day for all those who are sick and suffering, remembering especially those of this place, for Barbara, Bill, Brian, David, Francis, Jeannie, John, Larry, Pat, Priscilla, and Randy. We pray for our family, friends, and others who need and desire our prayers. Remembering Barbara, Brandon, Chris, David, Dean, Diane, Drew, Helga, Jack, Jeff, Joan, Joe, Mary, Melanie, Monica, Myra, Naomi, Nina, Rob, Sid, and Waylon. We pray for the souls of the faith that departed who share with us in this Eucharist, remembering Joseph. We also pray for our U.S. Armed Forces who are deployed for the 4th Platoon of the 812th Adjutant General Company. And in our provincial prayer cycle, we pray for St. Augustine of Canterbury Church, Scarborough, Maine, Holy Trinity Church, Waterville, Maine, St. Paul's Church, Grand Rapids, Michigan, St. Patrick's Church, Kalamazoo, Michigan, and the Church of the Most Holy Trinity in Southfield, Michigan. Pray, brethren, that this my sacrifice, and yours also, may be acceptable in the sight of God the Father Almighty. May the, may Lord, the Lord receive, receive this sacrifice at my hands, hands the, the praise, praise and glory of His name. His name both to our benefit and that of all His Holy Church. Amen. Let us pray for the whole state of Christ's Church. Almighty and ever-living God, who by Thy Holy Apostle has taught us to make prayers and supplications, and to give thanks for all men, we humbly beseech Thee most mercifully to accept our oblations, and to receive these our prayers which we offer unto Thy Divine Majesty, beseeching Thee to inspire continually the universal Church with the spirit of truth, unity, and concord, and grant that all those who do confess Thy holy name may agree in the truth of Thy holy word and live in unity and godly love. We beseech Thee also so to direct and dispose the hearts of all Christian rulers that they may truly and impartially administer justice to the punishment of wickedness and vice and to the maintenance of Thy true religion and virtue. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops and other ministers that they may both by their life and doctrine set forth Thy true and lively word 
and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. And to all thy people give thy heavenly grace, and especially to this congregation here present, that with meek heart and due reverence they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. And we must humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succor all those who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. And we also bless thy holy name for all thy servants departed this life in thy faith and fear, beseeching thee to grant them continual growth in thy love and service, and to give us grace so to follow their good examples, that with them we may be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Grant this, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. Amen. Ye who do truly and earnestly repent you ever sins and are love and charity with your neighbors, and intend to lead a new life following the commandments of God and walking from henceforth in His holy ways, draw near with faith and take this holy sacrament to your comfort and make your humble confession to Almighty God, devoutly kneeling. Almighty God, Father, Father of our Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ maker of all things, judge of all men. We acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed by thought, word, and deed against thy divine majesty, provoking most justly thy wrath and indignation against us. We do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us, the burden of them is intolerable. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. For thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in newness of life, to the honor and glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins, to all those who with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him. Have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what comfortable words our Savior Christ saith unto all who truly turn to him. Come unto me, all ye that travail and are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. So God loved the world, that he gave his only begotten Son, to the end that all that believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Hear also what St. Paul saith, This is a true saying and worthy of all men to be received, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Hear also what St. John saith, If any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the propitiation for our sins. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is meet and right so to do. It is very meet, right, and our bounden duty, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto Thee, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, everlasting God. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify Thy glorious name, evermore praising Thee and saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of Thy glory. Glory be to Thee, O Lord Most High. Amen. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. All glory be to Thee, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, for that Thou of Thy tender mercy didst give Thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made there by His one oblation of Himself once offered a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation, and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world and at Institute, and in His Holy Gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of that His precious death and sacrifice until His coming again. For in the night in which He was betrayed, He took bread, and when He had given thanks, He broke it and gave it to His disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is My body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of Me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, 
For this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it in remembrance of me. Wherefore, Lord and Heavenly Father, according to the institution of thy dearly beloved Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, we, thy humble servants, do celebrate and make here before thy divine majesty with these thy holy gifts, which we now offer unto thee, the memorial thy Son hath commanded us to make, having in remembrance his blessed passion and precious death, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, rendering unto thee most hearty thanks for the innumerable benefits procured unto us by the same. And we most humbly beseech thee, O merciful Father, to hear us, and of thy almighty goodness vouchsafe to bless and sanctify with thy word and Holy Spirit these thy gifts and creatures of bread and wine, that we, receiving them according to thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. And we earnestly desire thy fatherly goodness mercifully to accept this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, most humbly beseeching thee to grant that, by the merits and death of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and all thy whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all of the benefits of his passion. And here we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls and bodies, to be a reasonable, holy, and living sacrifice unto thee, humbly beseeching thee that we and all others who shall be partakers of this holy communion may worthily receive the most precious body and blood of thy Son, Jesus Christ, be filled with thy grace and heavenly benediction, and made one body with him that he may dwell in us and we in him. And although we are unworthy through our manifold sins to offer unto thee any sacrifice, yet we beseech thee to accept this our bounden duty and service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom, in the unity of the Holy Ghost, all honor and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ hath taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And with thy spirit. We do not presume to come to this, this thy table, table O merciful Lord, Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in, in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table, but thou art the same Lord, whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world. Have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world. Have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world. Grant us thy peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him that taketh away the sins of the world. Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldst come under my roof, but speak the word only, and my soul shall be healed. Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldst come under my roof, but speak the word only, and my soul shall be healed. Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldst come under my roof, 
but speak, speak the, the word, word only, and, and my soul shall be healed. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was given for thee, preserve thy body and soul unto everlasting life. The blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was shed for thee, preserve thy body and soul unto everlasting life. Amen. of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was given for thee, preserve thy body and soul unto everlasting life. Take and eat this in remembrance that Christ died for thee, and feed on him in thy heart with faith and thanksgiving. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was given for thee, preserve thy body and soul unto everlasting life. Take and eat this in remembrance that Christ died for thee, and feed on him in thy heart with faith and thanksgiving. For those who are at home and cannot be present for receiving, spirit, receiving Holy Communion, let's say the prayer for receiving spiritual communion together. My Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, I believe that Thou art truly present in the sacrament of Holy Communion. Since I cannot now receive Thee with my lips, I humbly beseech Thee to enter spiritually into my heart. I unite myself unto Thee, Lord Christ and embrace thy presence with my whole heart, soul, and mind. Let me never be separated from thee. May the body and blood of my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, celebrated at this altar, fill me with divine strength, preserve me from any evil and danger, and bring me unto life everlasting. Amen. And now, having received the most precious body and blood of our Savior Jesus Christ, let us pray together in great thanksgiving. Almighty and ever living God, we, we most heartily thank thee, for that thou dost thou praise to feed, feed us, who have duly received these holy mysteries, with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of thy Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, and dost assure us thereby of thy favor and goodness towards us and that we are very members and corporate in the mystical body of thy Son, which is the blessed company of all faithful people, and are also heirs through hope of thy everlasting kingdom by the merits of his most precious death and passion. And we humbly beseech thee, O Heavenly Father, so to assist us with thy grace, that we may continue in that holy fellowship and do all such good works as thou hast prepared for us to walk in. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. Glory be to God on high, and, and on earth peace, peace goodwill towards, towards men. We, we praise thee, thee, we bless thee, we worship thee, we glorify thee, thee. We, we give thanks, thanks to thee for thy great glory. O Lord, Lord God, God, Heavenly King, God, God the Father Almighty, 
O Lord, Lord, the only begotten begotten Son, Jesus Jesus Christ. Christ. O O Lord Lord God, God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, that that takest takest away the the sins of the world, world, have have mercy mercy upon us. us. Thou that that takest takest away the sins of the world, world, receive our prayer. Thou that sittest at the right hand of God the Father, have mercy upon us. For Thou only art holy, Thou only art the Lord, Thou only, O Christ, with the Holy Ghost, art most high in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who hast made this day honorable for us by the Nativity of Blessed John, Grant unto thy people the grace of spiritual joys, and direct the souls of all the faithful into the way of eternal salvation. Through thy Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with thee in the Holy Ghost ever, one God, world without end. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Depart in peace. Thanks be to God. The peace of God, which passeth all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God, and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Let's praise and honor the Lord Jesus Christ, as the most glorious throne in heaven, as the most blessed sacrament of all the knowledge, as faithful people, may the souls of all the faithful departed through the mercy of God rest in peace, and the light perpetual shine upon them. Amen.